special, you can look at that and say, this isn't special. If I want to be special, I need to do something else. So a special person, what do they do? What, what do you guys think of special people? Or what, do do? Or what makes a person special? That's a better question. How do you believe it? I'm trying to get to something. I'm trying to get to one word. Uh, doing. doing. Boom. Oh. <laughs> what they do, right? What makes a person special is based on what they do. If it's not just who they are. Like some people will say, oh, well that person's special because of you know the family they come from or where they come from or the money they have or things like that. That's not what makes a person special. When you remember someone that you think is special, more than likely you think of something that they've done that, that has made them special to you. The reason I'm pointing out what average is is because when we think about what we want to do with our life, we kind of look at average and we say we don't want average or we don't want to be normal. But the majority of people are, right? The majority of people are normal. They don't do special things. The, the majority of people are normal. And don't get me wrong, it's okay being ordinary. Like when I see a patient, like I want everything to be ordinary with them. Like I don't want their, them to have a special heart rate or anything. Like, you know? <laughs> so being ordinary is good. I'm not against like having ordinary things or being normal. Like in medicine, normal is like what you want to be. But in life, when, you, when you're coming up as a kid, or even now, when you decide what you want to do, you don't say, well, you know, I kind of want to be normal. If I could be normal, that would be, you know, that would be good. <laughs> right? You decide you want to do something else outside of normal, where you look at what everyone else does, and you say, well, I think I want to do something different, so I want to be special. And that's what we tell our kids, right? And that's, that's what my mom told me, oh, you're special, you're not like everyone else. That's what we strive for. But if everyone's striving to be special, why does everyone still, the majority of people, end up being normal? If you don't recognize that something is special, it, it, it's not different to you. If you're not able to recognize a special time or a special moment, you're not going to do anything different in that time. So the first step to making something special is being able to recognize a special person or a special place or a special time. It's practice the most, actually. And I know right now, you guys are like, what? <laughs> practice? How can he miss practice the most? Practice is what sucked, right? But as, as I left basketball, as basketball wasn't a part of my life anymore, I realized that I had less and less time to practice. And what is practice? If you think about it, when you're practicing, you're there. It's dedicated time in your day where you, you're working to improve yourself. Like, that's why you practice, right? That's the whole reason to be there is to get better. Whereas well, you leave basketball and you go on to like a professional life, there's less and less time for you to completely dedicate to improving yourself in some area that you need to work on. In basketball, it's real easy. You say, oh, I need to work on my shot, I need to work on this, my hand, blah, 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 blah. But in life, it gets harder. It's not as simple. And so people go through life, after playing basketball, they don't practice anymore, meaning they don't take time out of their day to improve themselves. So when I realized I didn't have basketball anymore, I was like, when am I going to spend time in my day to actually improve on something? Or am I just going to live? So I miss practice. Because at time during practice, that's when you push yourself. That's when you try harder. That's when you got better. You can see yourself getting better in something. You make progress. When basketball, when, 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 when you don't have basketball anymore, you, you, you don't have practice anymore. When you recognize something, you hear people say recognize all the time, you know. Recognize. You better recognize. Everybody's heard of that, right? After you recognize something is special, and, it, and it, so I want you guys to understand, like, you, you, you can make something special in your brain. Like, you can psych yourself out and say something special, or a special night, or you say, oh, this is going to be a good night, or a special person you meet and you think they're special. Then all of a sudden, you start to act different around them, right? Because you think they're special. By recognizing that they're special, then all of a sudden, you start to do different things. So, first key to making something special is to recognize the special time, then you start to act different. So, different special act of being nice, man. That's, that's rare. Like, I, like, sometimes I have to like tone down how nice I am to people because I don't want them to think I'm weird. You know what I mean? Just doing something nice for somebody. Like they drive some, oh, let me get that for you. I'm sorry, no, I don't want anything. Leave me alone, you know. Being nice is, is rare, right? I mean, how often do you meet someone that they just go out of their way to be nice to you? 
I mean, just really trying hard to be nice to you. It's really, you know, like, so we know what normal is, but when you think about special, it's a little harder. I'm like, oh, how do you, what's special? What's actually a special act? We know more about normal. And I would argue that that's why a lot of people end up doing normal things, because they know more about what normal is. They know more about what's accepted as a norm or what's expected of them, and then that's what they do, because they know more about it. So, by recognizing, you start to act different. So I'll just use an example of like, uh, you know, dating somebody or something. You see like a girl, you think she's special, or a guy that's special. And then you start like acting different around them, right? Talking different, you do different things because you're now, you know, you think this person is special. So recognizing that you act different. By acting different, now that leads you to different expectations. Expectations, I think expect <laughs> I think this is like the main key to, to everyone's life. Anyone's life. What you expect to get out of life, nine times out of ten is usually what you get. What you personally expect, not necessarily what someone expects out of you. What you expect out of yourself is usually what you produce into your life. And if I expected something different, I would have got something. Because if I expected something different, I would have acted different, right? I would have acted totally different because of what I was expecting. If I expect to, if I'm playing a game or I'm playing against somebody or whatever, and I expect to win, I play totally different. Like when I was playing basketball, I was coming up and I was a late, like, I was a late bloomer in basketball. I started playing basketball at like 11. I don't know, maybe you guys, did you guys start playing before that? Yeah, most of you. So I, I started playing at 11. And uh, I, had, I had to get good pretty quick, and I learned early, and I'm sure you guys heard this before. It's not new. This isn't like profound knowledge. But I realized that in order for me to get better, I had to play against better people. If I played against, in, and I, at the time I was living in Memphis, like I moved everywhere, but I went to high school in Memphis, Tennessee. And in, in Memphis, if you were a basketball player and you weren't good, we called you slop, like you were slop. Like, you know, like coleslaw, or, you know. So you were slow, right? So we'd go to the park with my friends, and we'd be like, we'd look at who was playing on different courts or whatever, and we'd say, okay, slaw's over there, and I want to play with the slaw. Like, we don't play with that, right? Because if I play with the slaw, I expect to win. I don't expect to improve. I expect to just destroy this person, right? Because they're slow. That's what I expect. Now, if I go over here to this court, and I say, oh, wait a minute, these guys are, these guys are pretty good. Wait a second, I don't know. This might, be, this might be a challenge. I might be able to learn something from that. So I decided I would only play with people that were better than me. That was it. If I was better than you, I didn't want to play. When I got, well, well later in life, when I realized I could like, help people or contribute to people's lives, then I would let Slaw play. I would play with Slaw because I was like, well, I can help you a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, well, I can help you do something. Or, you know. But when, at, at that moment in time when I was trying to get better, I didn't, I didn't want to have anything to do with Slaw. Like, if I was better than you, I didn't want to play. Expectations lead to moments. It was a decision. It's, it's, it's a decision that you make every day. And I, and I, I know it, I, I know it like sucks to hear that like, if something is not special to you, that you decided that it's not special. Or if that day wasn't special to you, then you made a decision not to make that day special. Or if that game wasn't special to you, then you decided that that game wasn't special. I know it sucks. Or if, if you don't think your life is special, you decided not to make your life special. Like, that's hard to hear. But if, as far as my 30 years that I've been living, I'm not like some like guru or whatever, I'm only 30. In my life, th that's the number one thing that made a difference is when I made a decision. If I wanted to make something special, I made it special. If I didn't want to make it special, it wasn't special. It's a, it's a decision. And every day you wake up, you have to decide what you're going to do with that day. Am I going to make this day special, or is it going to be an ordinary or regular day? When I wake up, I make that decision. I make that decision when I roll out of bed. Like when, I roll, when I rolled out of bed this morning, I knew I was coming here to talk. It was a special day. So I got up. I'm in the mirror. I'm like, do my dog? I'm like, oh, my dog. <laughs> Oh. Right? Because today was special. It was different. It was different than all the other days. 
So I rolled out of bed like knowing, okay, today's special, something's different, something's different, let's go, let's go. And I can make that decision every day. Now, today it was special because I, had, I was coming to speak to you guys, and tomorrow may be special about something else. But every day I have to make a decision if I'm going to make it special. You can't skip that decision. If you don't make the decision to make it special, it's going to be regular. It's going to be regular. Your day is going to be regular. Practice is going to be regular. Life's going to be regular. And you made it. You made that decision one day at a time. And then, I in basketball, kind of the moment that actually changed my life in basketball, one of my coaches. The coaches I hated the most, the coach I hated the most, is, is the coach that had the most impact on me. The coach that actually made me quit, he's the coach that had the most impact on me. I hated playing for this guy. I won't say his name, his name, I'll just say Coach G. Okay? Coach G was one of those guys that just, he just would not get off my back all the time. Everything I did, everything I did, like every little thing about me, he was just always on me and I hated him. I hated him for it. Coach G didn't like finger rolls, okay? He hated finger rolls. You could not finger roll in this guy's presence or he would just flip. He was like, hey, you need, you need to take it off the backboard or you need to dunk it, but you're not finger rolling on this team. I'll tell you about the story. One day in a game. All right? I'm playing defense. Like I said, I really like I really liked getting steals. So I was just all over that, right? So I get a steal. I get a steal like half court. So I rip with this guy. So when I was playing, we called like we called them cookies, right? Like if you took this dude's ball, like cookies. You know what I mean? So I'm playing D's guy, whatever. I'm like, dude, son, he doesn't have any handles at all. I got this dude, right? Boop, oh, cookies, oh, you know, gone, right? Boom, so I'm gone down the other end. So I do a little something, do like a little crossover, get by this other guy, right? I'm feeling myself, I'm like, yeah, this is good. I'm like, I just took this dude's cookies, this is going to kill, it's over, right? Boom, so I take this, and then for some reason, for some reason, I got in my head, I was going to make this sweet. Like, you know what I mean, how I finished this? This is going to be sweet, right? It was going to be smooth. So I go up, and for some, for some reason, I forgot who I was playing for. I forgot where I was. I went back to the apartment. I'm going to finger roll this thing so clean. Oh, do a little finger roll. I miss it. I miss it, right? It goes up the back of the rim. Comes back. I was like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Oh, this is bad. Okay. So, coach was cool about it at halftime or whatever. He was cool about it. We went on and won the game or whatever. It was cool. It was cool. It wasn't like a. He, to him, it was a game changer. But to me, I thought, like, we still won. It's all good. It's going to be okay. After the game, okay, this is me. This is my face. Coach was like this in my face. What are you doing? I told you I'm about Vero. You got to lose your mind. I mean, like, ripping it into me, right? I was already feeling bad. I had missed the layup. It was already like a tough time for me, right? And he's just laying it. He does not stop. Like 10 minutes straight, right? So we're in, this, we're in this room of like, you know, grown guys and everybody's, you know, big buff basketball playing guys. I'm, I'm like about to cry. He's really getting to me that much. You know when someone really gets to you, right? Gets under your skin? So I'm about to start crying, right? And I'm like, Marcus. You will not cry in front of these dudes, right? I don't care how much, I don't care how bad you feel for yourself, you're feeling sorry for yourself, you're not about to cry. After that day, I never went back to the team. I quit. So now you're talking, man. Don't talk to me like that. Lost his mind. I left. It took me about two weeks to realize how much I love basketball. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to go on without playing basketball. So I went back. Long story, I'm sorry, long story. I went back, right? I said, Coach, I'm sorry. I want to play. I messed up. You, you were coming at me crazy. I didn't know how to handle it. You know, you almost made me cry. I mean, Coach, what do what you want me to do? Can I come back to the team, Coach? Just let me come back. He's like, hey, man, this is my team. This is your teammates' team. You guys are your teammates. You don't want to left your teammates mid-season. You left them. You left them. You didn't care what they want to do. It was all about you. You just left your team. You didn't care, right? You go ask your teammates if you 
went to my team and said, come on, guys, look. Hey, man, y'all know how to coach G is. Come on, man. Let me back on the team. So they let me back. But before he let me out of his office that day, he said something to me. He said, wait a minute, son. This is Coach G. <laughs> son, don't you understand that the same way you're dealing with this problem right here on this basketball court, how you quit, the same way you're dealing with that, that's how you're going to deal with problems in your life. That's how you're going to deal with problems in your life, son. Don't you understand that this is practice for life? Don't you understand that? You failed on this team. You failed to play at the level you wanted to play at. You failed to keep the starting position. You're going to fail in life the same way. And then you quit, and you're going to quit in life. That's just what you're going to do, son. Don't you understand that? Oh, my God. He lit me up. I mean, I, I was so mad. Usually, you know, usually in the position of authority, I usually don't come back at people, right? I'm just like, okay, yes, sir, yes, sir, especially in the military, like, you, you don't do that. And then so, and so, you know, he's in a position of authority. I'm like, okay, coach, okay, coach, yes. Usually that's how it was, right? When he said that to me, I just couldn't accept. I could not be quiet at that point. I was like, coach, you, you, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a second. You've gone a little too far with that one, coach. You are not going to tell me what I'm going to do in my life. This is basketball. You lost your mind. Who do you, what do you think? Just because I'm not getting, you know, I'm not performing how you want me to perform on your basketball team, now you're going to tell me I'm going to have a life like that? You lost your mind. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do in my life. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, blah, 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 blah. Right? So I came back to the team. I sat for the rest of that year. I came back the next season in a starting position. But the reason I tell you that story Maybe seven years later, I realized that what he was telling me is the absolute truth. Absolute truth. Because I ran up against another wall in my life, uh, which was acceptance in a medical school, that turned out to be very difficult to me. I'm going to make this quick. It's quick. So, long story short, I didn't get into med school the first year I tried. I said, well, man, I wonder if I'm going to be a doctor. Oh, I didn't get in. Oh, let me try something else. I said, I'm going to go to optometry school. So I said, oh, let me apply for optometry school. And optometry school. Plan A, but since I failed at plan A, I said I was going to go to plan B. And I realized that, hey, I had quit on something else. I had quit on something else. I said I wanted to be a physician. Now, and it didn't work the first time, so I'm going to quit. I'm going to try something else. But I realized that I didn't want to accept plan B, basically. Was I willing to accept subpar for my entire life? Right? Because if I decide to go to optometry school, this is like four years, I'm going to be an optometrist. You know? I realized I didn't want to do that. So I realized that I could not quit on my dream. So I, I, I recognized the pattern. I was doing the same thing in basketball, same thing in my life. Absolutely right. Every day you practice, you're practicing for life. So what you do in practice, you're going to do the same thing in life. And you've got to recognize that. And if you don't accept it yet, you will later. You will later. It took me, like I said, seven years after my coach told me that to realize he was telling me the truth. So. Now I'm going to convince you guys why you should do something special with your life, or your time, or your team, or the school. Why? Why do you do something special? Being special is not all about yourself, right? Is it all about you, actually? Yeah. For a moment when I was coming up, I wanted to do special things so I could be special. Like, you know what I mean? So I could be the one. You know? I wanted to be special. It was all about me. You don't do special things. You can. I mean, you can. There's a lot of, you know, individually ambitious type of people that do things special for themselves. A lot of, and you can get, you can get so far, but there's limits. Your own self-motivation, it's an inferior motivating factor compared to when you do things for people that aren't yourself. For me, I call it the bigger than me theory. If I can understand how what I'm doing fits into a bigger picture or where it affects more people or impacts other people, then that means what I do is more important. Because I can see the scope of my influence or the scope of my impact. That's why you do something special. That's the most important reason to do something special, so you can impact another person. Not so you can impact yourself. Look at yourself and remember I'm special. No, it's not like that. The most important thing so you can see the impact that you make, and the impacts in another person. So I can sit here and talk to you guys about, you know, last 45 minutes about being special, and this is the reason why, you, why you're special. This is why you do something special, to impact another person. For you guys, obviously, 
you look around, you got your team, your teammates are the, the ideal person for you to impact right now. If you're part of this team, that's, that's the, the, the easiest person you're going to have to impact in your life, is your teammate. And you impact them by making something special and doing these things. This is my most, this, this, is, this is what wakes me up every day. This is why I speak, this is why I practice medicine the way I do. This is why I do everything I can do. This is why I'm all over online doing things. This is why, because of impact. I want to impact people in a positive way, obviously. You can impact people in a negative way as well. You can, imp you can impact people in a negative way by doing this. When you do regular, ordinary things, you impact the person that's beside you, because now they look at you, and they expect to do regular and ordinary things. So it, 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 it goes both ways as far as impact and influence. So you make a decision on how you want to impact that person. If you want to impact, you do special things. Special people impact people. Special moments impact you. When you think back in your life, you think about something that impacted you. It's a special time. It's not an ordinary time. It wasn't an ordinary day that you remember. It wasn't an ordinary conversation you remember. It was a special conversation or that special person or that special time. That's what you remember. So if you, you've got to make a decision that you want to impact people first. Impact your teammates. Impact the team. Impact the school. Impact the conference. Impact the community. By making something special, you can do that. You gotta believe it. You gotta convince yourself that it's worth it. You gotta convince yourself that the impact is worth it. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a daily decision that you have to make. So it's like, hey, am I ready to make the decision that I want to make something special? Am I gonna make this day special? Am I dedicated to making that decision? Do I want to impact it? If you can wake up and say, hey, I want to impact someone today. Thank you.